it's time to talk about machining aluminum on the Shape Oco 3. You need to have a solid understanding of the machine. Cutting wood, finding XYZ zero, using carbide motion. You might even already have a nice simple aluminum project already picked out. So let's move forward. While the machine might have successfully cut wood, it may not be rigid enough to cut aluminum. You need to double check all your fasteners. They need to be tight. The Delrin V-Groove rollers all need to be snug up against the channel, upper and lower V-Grooves, tight. The stepper motors will push it. You also need to tighten the Z-axis belt. I had it tight, wasn't tight enough. The Z-axis motor plate is weak, and I have a fix for that in some upcoming videos. Let's get going. Now, while I may have the aluminum bed plate and you have the MDF, that shouldn't bother us at all. It just means that you need to add a few more hold down clamps. And when I mean clamps, I don't mean plywood. Go to the home center, get some aluminum quarter inch or half inch and make up some clamps. Simple to do, much stronger than wood. Okay, now once that's happening, you need to know a little secret. Coated end mills is the bomb. During the shearing of aluminum in the cutting process, a tremendous amount of heat is generated actually near the melting point of aluminum. And right after it's sheared, it's smacked into the front face of the cutter as a picture that will be coming up here shortly will show. Hot aluminum is sticky like peanut butter. And I don't care what your speeds and feeds are. It's going to stick up against the cutter eventually and gall up. And once it fills up that flute full of aluminum, there's no room for that chip to go. And then all hell breaks loose and you end up breaking cutters. So, coated cutters. You have to trust me on this. I also prefer full flute. Please, never install a standard length drill in your router. If it's just slightly off center, it will bend, break, and be sent out as a projectile. Take care with your cutters in your toolbox. In the video, you see that I have uncoated end mills. Yep. Um, some of them are old high-speed steel from about 35 years ago when I was a machinist. And the uncoated carbide is used for wood. Never touches a piece of metal. Now... During the manufacturing, I prefer to drill my aluminum. Unfortunately, Carbide Create doesn't have a drilling program. You can try using a pocketing program, but it doesn't usually work when you need a quarter inch hole and you need a when you have a quarter inch end mill. It doesn't create code. So I use Fusion 360 for that and a full retract peck position program um, or cycle. Very simple to use. There's a bunch of helpful tutorials out there. But remember, you're going to crawl, walk, and then run. Worry about peck cycles after you've mastered a, a dozen aluminum parts. Now you can see that I use a WD-40 drips um, lubricant. There's a couple of reasons I do this. One, I like the finish quality on aluminum when you use it. The aluminum comes out bright, no tearing, no scratching. It also allows me to guarantee that I can leave the shop for hours on end and come back and not have a problem. Um, it only takes a couple of drops of WD-40 to guarantee a smooth operation. Information on my holder will be in the description. Now some of you have asked me some questions about speeds, feeds, and depths of cut. I put a paper at the end of the... Uh, this section of the video and feel free to stop it and write down that information or do a screenshot. All right, speeds. Spindle speed, I run at the slowest that the DeWalt rotor 
router goes, which is roughly 16,000 RPMs. Feed rate is 20 inches per minute. Um, I recommend that you start at about 10 to 11 inches per minute and slowly ramp your, your speeds up. Um, starting off too fast will very rapidly show you just how unprepared your machine is. Starting slowly is a little bit safer. Um, let's see, so, and now depth of cut, 20,000th depth of cut. Think of this as a high-speed machine where you take rapid, uh, small cuts. That's how it's done in industry. There's nothing wrong with it. Can the machine handle more? Yes, but that's in the future. Remember, crawl, walk, run. Uh, you've also asked me where I get my material. Um, I go to an industrial metal supplier, and I scrounge through what's called the remnant bin. It's um, thousands of pounds of aluminum and stainless steel and just about any size and length imaginable for the home hobbyist. And both the stainless steel and the aluminum is sold at $2 a pound. For the 3 by 10 inch metal vise that I produced in the previous video, uh, the aluminum ran me $19. Now that's a steal. Again, let's pick out a very simple project and we'll talk about that. Um, my final cut on this aluminum block, which measures 3 by 10, is done in a four-pass fashion. I run Right now it's in a horizontal fashion. I then change it to the vertical, or so I run it in X minus, X plus, then Y minus, Y plus, then I run a diagonal, minus 45 and plus 45 you'll see the picture of the G-code. Now, why do I do that? Well, as I said, that the Z-axis motor plate, yeah, they, here you can see, if you look closely, you'll see random cutters from all different directions as well as the cutter path here. Um, the Z-axis motor plate is weak and you get some deflection which causes the cutter to cut slightly unsquare at the face of the cutter. So cutting it four times on my last pass, produces a very, very flat of us. Um, so my goal on this plate was to cut it to 752 to 754, but I wanted it flat. Well, I got 752 to 754 taper. Not a big deal. Um, this is still in the pre-machining stage. Now, if you look at what this, how smooth this is, I use a 18 inch piece of granite tile that I got at the home center for about two bucks. It had a cracked corner. I tape a piece of one day grit sandpaper to it and just run it along that. And within a few minutes, you have uh, all the cutter marks removed. Um, the final sanding will be done once the uh, dovetails are machined in on that cutter. I mean, on that base plate. Now, I unfortunately, from day one, had a lot of error messages where the carbide motion would disconnect. Oh, by the way, this kind of... Uh, finishes it for the information on machining aluminum. One of the best options that I purchased for this machine was the homing switches from Additive Aerospace, I think it is. Again, link in the descriptions. Um, it puts five home, five uh, limit switches, XY, Z, XY plus minus Z plus. Um, and it also sets the machine for homing, which I think is um, uh, setting 20, 21, and 22, which happens to be hard and soft limits. What that does, oh, by the way, just a quick picture. I put a sock over my router because I don't want it to ingest any of the aluminum chips. Highly conductive. You will burn out your router in a few days. Change the sock often. Um, so yeah, so these uh, limit switches, one of the nice features is what it does is when it, the program loads, it reads ahead almost to the entire program if it's not too long. And if it thinks it's going to hit, or if, it, if it's going to hit a limit switch, it gives you an error and it never actually runs. You just have to move your plate or your part on the table further away from that axis that it was going to hit and rerun the program. Um, as you saw right there, I G, I G zero or rapid it down to my Z, what I would call Z zero. Um, you don't ever actually have a Z zero anymore. Zero, zero, zero is in the home position and everything else has a new number. 
Now, along with the um, limit switch, this option also comes with the probing. And let me tell you, I was never a fan of putting my hand on the cutter with a piece of paper. Um, I just found that to be unsafe. Here you go. You just tell the machine to touch the material, touches the material, it stops, it gives you the exact position, and I mean exact, it repeats within a few microns right there, Z0 is 30.36 from Z0, um, so after that you type in this code G10L20P1 through P, I think 5, which is a memory section for um, setups. Uh, you load your program. The program doesn't have to change. It's the existing program that you did even before you had homing switches. And the, the dribble board does all the math as far as adding and subtracting from where it is to where it needs to go. And it just runs slick. It also allows you to stop anywhere in the program, send it home, to shut the machine off, start it back up, send it back to home position, and uh, start the program over again. Now my next video will be detailed information about my enclosure, a bunch of you have asked. I welded it together, but I'll also tell you how to make it without welding it. Um, it definitely decreases the noise by about uh, 50 to 60 percent, nice and quiet, as well as very, very safe. Well, I want to thank you all for watching and hit me up with any questions that you have.